Hey everyone, welcome back to ClayShareCon 2023. And we have a really great tutorial ready for you. We have Nikolai joining us from Diamond Core Tools and he's gonna be doing some relief carving with the four piece relief carving set. So if you've ever wanted to, one, see how Diamond Core Tools work and two, learn about relief carving, well then this is for you. Uh, Nikolai's been with us before. We've had many other demos with him on ClayShare. So after you watch this, if you want to see more, go back and check them out. And also be sure to follow Diamond Core Tools on social media to see all their fabulous products and to check out what they have going on. So let's get on over to Nikolai. I know he has a lot to share with us. Hey, Nikolai, how are you? How are you doing? Hey, everyone. I'm Nikolai from Diamond Core Tools. Uh, if you haven't joined in before, I will be doing, um, I'll be doing a demo today. And as Jessica mentioned, I'll be showing, I'll be using uh, four of our new relief carving tools um, these came out about a month ago and they do come in a set a 4pr set that will be we'll be giving one of those away later today um, i'm going to use all four of these and i'm going to get started here right away because i have a lot i want to show you um, let me turn this around so uh, relief carving if anyone is not too familiar with that. It is, uh, you're basically just taking off like a very thin layer off the top. This is a bisque fired piece. Um, this has a lot of detail on it, but it's just kind of an example of um, the detail that you can achieve with these four tools. Um, it's the way I would describe relief carving. It's almost like you're trying to get a three-dimensional sculpture on a 2D surface. So you're not really going very deep, but you're trying to create that illusion of, of depth. Um, and so I'm going to be actually trying to carve a, I printed this out, a bird of paradise flower on this cup today. And I don't always print a picture, but for the purpose of the demo, I want to show how I might go from an image and how you might want to turn an image into that three-dimensional kind of sculpture on the surface. So I'm going to put this next to me right here. And I'm just going to be, if you wanted to, you could actually cut it out. You could trace it on your piece. There's a lot of ways to get that image on here. I'm not going to talk about that. I'm just going to kind of pencil it on. Um, as I carve today, I'm going to be bouncing, bouncing through the four of these, and I'll try and explain why I'm using the one that I'm using. Real quick, we have um, a long diamond what we call and so this is it's got a v-tip on top but it also has i'm trying to get it up close um it's kind of like this skinny long diamond shape we have a the p27 which is this straight slope and so this has a really nice sharp angle right at top right at the top there and then a straight slope coming down so that's going to be really useful for a couple spots we have the candle flame and this is similar to the long diamond but it has these smooth arced sides and i'll show you when i use that and then finally we have the uh curved slope rather rounded slope one and this this is similar where you do have a point here but it's not as acute of an angle so you have this big sweeping wide curve and so i'll show you where where i like using that one so first things first um i do like to i actually use the back of these tools i just kind of pencil on the shape that I'm doing, um, and then you actually add the relief to it. So with this Bird of Paradise, I'm literally just going to um, do a light a light little sketch. You can, you can barely see it there. Uh, but all I'm trying to do is get the kind of the outline of this on, on the piece. And this is maybe if you're if you're tracing it, it could go really pretty easy. But I am just sort of eyeballing it. Um, and again, this could be anything. You could do this with squares or triangles or um, any kind of any real shapes. I think flowers are a good idea. And this is a somewhat straightforward one because it's mostly straight-ish lines, a few curves. And the purpose of penciling it is just to kind of give you the the overall shapes. 
And then you'll see as we do the relief carving, you're you're giving that illusion of depth. So you want the closest image or the closest shape to look like the top shape if you were layering everything and then the furthest away shape to kind of look like the deepest in the background. And so hopefully you can see a little bit there. It's a very, very light pencil outline. Um, I'm not super worried if I don't do the perfect line, I'm not super worried about um, having extra scratches or something because I'm going to carve all this up. So I just want something to follow. Here we go. Almost, almost got her. Every once in a while, we will get a question, you know, what's the back of that tool for? I use it for this all the time. It's just a handy little point. And then this kind of comes out. There we have it. So you can kind of see there a little bit. I just have this light pencil outline of this flower. And now we got to make it look 3D. So the first thing I kind of like to do is I use the, I do start with the P26, this long diamond. Um, it's a nice V-tip. You can get into narrow spots. Um, I kind of just go give one little pass in some of these areas where the petals overlap. So if you look at this picture, um, I can tell that this, this blue part right here, that's like in front. Um, the very, very front part is kind of the main body right here. So I wanna make sure that is the very top surface. I'm not really gonna carve a whole lot on that. Um, and then we have all these little petals. And so I gotta pick out which petal is on top and I'm gonna outline that one. So I know which one to leave on top, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna kind of pick an order here. It looks like that one that one that one to make it easy and we'll go backwards so on on my piece here and just so everyone knows this is like a hard leather hard um true like leather hard i've found for relief carving and this is kind of a personal preference it's just a little soft sometimes you'll go in a little too deep and I like to be able to just shave a very thin layer at a time. So if you if you need to go deep deeper, you just shave more layers, um, but you're not gonna kind of sink in or get unnecessary marks. So it's definitely not bone dry, but you're gonna see like kind of shavings come off of it. So here's the first petal. I wanna make sure, I'm just gonna give this a little bit deeper outline. And these, tools so yes i am using the the v tip but i'm turning it on the side and i'm actually trying to they're kind of made to use the side of the tool a lot so hopefully you can see that there i'm just going to be shaving you know a thin layer and you can see so i'm not getting necessarily like a a big noodle or a big shaving, uh, but I'm not really getting dust at all. It's kind of in between, and that's about how I like it. So I'm going to give this petal 
a more defined outline. Just like that. The next one in line is this one. So I'm going to do the same thing there. And what's important is down in the bottom here where all these overlap, I want to really pay attention to kind of the order of operations that I do this because I want to, I want to make sure it gives the illusion of these petals overlapping. Now, Nikolai, what clay are you using? This is this is a B-mix. So I think this is actually Aardvark B-mix. Um, Just a smooth white clay body. Yeah, smooth white clay body. Um, there's... I mean, you can tell, like in B-Mix, it's not porcelain, so it's not just like perfectly smooth. Um, but this is plenty smooth enough to get nice lines. If you, I've tried something like this on a more groggy clay, and you definitely um, have to deal with more kind of like little streaks and that sand dragging along. You can still make some stuff, but you do have to deal with more like little chips and pieces coming out. So I really do like a smooth white clay for this. Um, and then, of course, if you were to stain this or put a nice transparent glaze on it, that's all going to help you help it look a little bit better. Okay. And I'm I'm really trying to use this narrow diamond one just for these little areas in here that um, it's kind of very close quarters, you could say. I am going to come back with the larger ones and uh, sort of emphasize these areas, but all in here where it's very, very tight, I can reach in there. So this is a very skinny piece, so I want to go very slow. And then go in there so you can hopefully see. I'm just trying to add a very delicate line. And you can do this. Um, it's very similar. You can do this also with the 28, the P28. You get a similar effect. The side of the tool is going to be different, though. So like I mentioned, I like to sort of hug the side of the tool. You're going to get a different, slightly different shape there. Um, and so I kind of switch back and forth depending on how much of this... Uh, I don't know what to call it. It's like the blending part. How long of that blending part I want. The uh, the 28 is going to be a little bit longer. Okay, <clears throat> so that, and I'm gonna do, so I pretty much have those top outlined. That's gonna be the most intricate part. Now I'm gonna switch to the, I'm gonna go all the way to the end here, the P29. So this is that uh, rounded, rounded slope. Um, this I really like using for, to create like maximum depth. And so this main body, down here, that's the part that we know is it's up front and everything behind it is very far away. So this one, I want to kind of create a maximum depth effect. And that blending line, I want that to be fairly significant. And so this is why I like this 
this dryness of clay is you can get these little shavings, but you're not you're not gonna sink too deep all of a sudden. And I can do multiple passes and then kind of just blend that out. So here you can see I actually have a fairly, you know, significant cut right there, but this is all blended right there. So that's what I like this one for. I'm going to do the same thing coming up here. This is a very delicate operation. So um, take your time. That's why I'm trying to uh, use every minute I got, because I, I definitely go slow in some of these areas. Um, sometimes you have kind of one, if you want to make a really nice line, you, you really got to just go slow and make sure it's in the right spot. That way you're not, you know, cutting over it over and over again. So Nikolai, when you know you're going to do relief carving on a piece, do you throw it a little thicker? Um, not so relief carving. Uh, I actually don't intentionally throw it thicker because I don't really go that deep. Uh, and that's, that's just me. So um, if now again, I'm not going paper thin at the same time. So I do pay attention, um, but I'd say the the deepest I go is probably that what you can see. Um, so it's really not that deep. This is the wall of my piece, so I don't know, a little less than a quarter inch or maybe an eighth of an inch or something. Um, I try not to go too deep, but again, some people do like to have multiple layers and we'll go quite a bit deeper. So if you're doing that, then definitely pay attention and throw it a little bit thicker. Okay, so that's going to be, now you can get the shadow just right. You can see this line all the way across the bottom. So it's fairly significant. I'm going to do the same thing up top here. And so right, for example, right where this, hopefully you can see there's a little tiny petal sticking out. That's behind this main body. So I'm going to go deep right, right here, and then go a little bit lighter right where that is. I'm going to kind of follow that pedal out. And we so had a, a few bit. folks ask if you burnish your surface before you carve. Um, I do. I do. So when I, I trim, right when I'm done trimming, I, I'll use a metal rib or like a little stone. Um, so that's why you can tell like where I, I haven't done anything, it is quite a bit shinier. So I, I do like doing that. You get just a really nice surface on there. And then this, the sloped part of this, I use that to sort of blend some of these areas just really lightly. And that kind of gets rid of any little bumps or scratches that I don't want. Um, so for example, right here, I need to get into that little corner. So this is where I will switch over to the straight slope. You have a little bit sharper angle. And here I can almost, I almost just like press directly in and then pull that out. So I switch between the rounded slope and the straight slope. So that's the P29 and the P27 quite a bit, um, just depending on where I'm trying to reach in there. And 
and then in this case it's hard to get um it's hard to get like the undercut that i want so then this is somewhere that i might go back to the p26 and just touch up that undercut because i want to make it look like it's sort of sticking out So that's about there. I'm going to do the same thing. And I'm here, I'm using the 27 again. I got to get way in there. And Anywhere, like as you, if you spend a lot of time in one spot, you might get a very bumpy surface. Um, and that's where I come back and maybe with the, this rounded part, I just kind of smooth it over. And then on the very outside, so the whole, like the main perimeter of this, not necessarily the inner lines, but the main perimeter, I want to emphasize that more. So that's what I'm going to use these larger sloped tools for. And then right here, I have a small, it's a small little curved area, so I'm going to go to this rounded slope. This is a very, very delicate area, so I'm just going slow. And then just kind of blend that area. So as I'm going here, you can kind of tell now it's, it's popping out a little bit more. So the more, even if I do a very, very light shaving, every, every shaving makes it look that much more in depth. Um, and so as you're, as you're going, kind of pull it back every once in a while and just see how the whole thing looks. Um, see if you need to add any little light areas. So something, for example, right here, I want to show that the main body is on top of this piece right here. And I'm not going to do a very deep line, but even, even just a, you know, a very, very light line will create that effect. Just like that. So you can see right there. I mean, it is the right angle hardly hardly took off anything but it it makes that effect of um, kind of like that layering <clears throat> and so that will get picked up by the glaze no problem
And then some of these areas are where I previously did a little bit of an outline. And the reason I do it in all these little intricate areas is because it makes it easier to follow with these little bit larger tools. And again, now I'm doing the perimeter just to make it give the whole thing this three-dimensional look. And then in here, it does get a little tight. So I go back to that straight slope so I can reach in there. We had a question. Do you have to worry about the um, edge if it's a little dry that it might break off when you're carving? Uh, so that's a good question. That's why I like not going all the way to bone dry. Um, it's it's like this in between stage where the the shavings still want to stick together a little bit. I guess is the way to describe it. Um, it's also a reason why I definitely recommend like a B mix or a porcelain or a very smooth clay. If you get any kind of grog or sand, you're hundred percent. There's almost, I don't know, you're going to get some little breakaways and stuff. Um, so, so definitely you, you call it. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was going to say that definitely go with a smoother clay if you can. Yeah. And you, you call it a hard leather hard. I think it's probably similar to what I call chocolate bar hardness when oh. I carve. Exactly, exactly. You might that. be, yeah. you know, so in the way for folks at home, if you're struggling with what that is like, take a, a bar of chocolate and just drag your fingernail across the back, not warm chocolate, you know, something about 70 degrees, but you drag your fingernail across it and you'll see how that chocolate will peel up. That's the clay dryness you want, where you drag your fingernail across the clay, it will pull up like that. So that's um, the biggest question I get when I teach the carving tutorials is how dry is the clay? Because I think that makes a huge difference. And your diamond core tools were designed to carve a little drier, which I think is better. Yeah. And the, the chocolate bar, that's a great way to put it. I haven't heard that. It's totally what it is because um, you can make. And the other thing is like they're, you know, they're obviously very sharp and thin. Um, and right at the end here, I'll show you another Kind of pattern that i'll do on the back side it's different um but because it is that sort of chocolate dryness you can just cut and make you get one chance to make a line but you can get a very crisp shape um, and if it was if it was leather hard if it was softer um, you would go too deep it would kind of distort and bend you just couldn't quite um shave it the same so yeah the chocolate Chocolate dryness is real important. Plus, anytime you can talk about chocolate. Of course, yeah. <laughs> you can try carving chocolate if you wanted, if you really wanted to practice. Get the. There, yeah, there you go. Get a, I'd put them in the fridge. Put your chocolate bar in the refrigerator and practice on those. That is the, that's the ideal <laughs> scenario. There we go. Okay, so I've just about got like the whole outline here. Um, and then just in an effort to save some time here, I'm gonna add a few little details to this. And you can tell that um, the whole outline, you know, it, it's obviously like coming off the piece, but I wanna add a couple little lines in here that just give it a little bit more texture. And so usually to do those, I will um, 
I'll use something like either the candle if I want to do something really small. Uh, so for example, some of these petals over here, I actually I need to go like this. Um, I want to add just like a hairline, a hairline line right up here. Okay, so that, I mean, it barely did anything, but you can see it. And that's where I'm really using the side of the piece. So you get a very defined line and then kind of blended. And even though, you know, you can't quite tell here, it's, it's hard to see, the glaze is going to pick that up and it'll just add like that touch of shadow or something. So this is something that you can do to just sort of add a little bit more detail. So I'm going to add another one right here. Again, hardly anything, but um, this is also the reason like I'll burnish stuff because the surface that I totally leave untouched does have that very glossy smooth. And then even if I just shave off or like roughen up the other surface, it's gonna have a different depth effect. So I'm gonna add another one here. Maybe a few here. So it just makes, you know, what appeared to be kind of a flat pedal. Maybe it's a little wrinkly or a little curved or something like that. Just adds a little bit more detail. Um, this big one here, that needs a few. Kind of like that. So again, I, I mean, hardly took off any actual material, but it just gives that nice depth effect. And then I got to finish up this little spot here. One thing you do have to, I mean, obviously our tools are thin. Um, they do have a little bit of flex in that direction. Um, but you really, that's what you just have to practice with. And it's really not noticeable once you get going. Um, they're very strong, you know, in your carving direction. But you can almost, sometimes I'll like even use that to like kind of bend around a corner or sort of flex into a little zone and, and just get a little scoop out of there. Okay, so I think I'll call that done on the on the flower part. And so that's basically, you know, a relief carving of this flower on here. And you can tell that all these little areas, you know, you create that layering effect by shaving off here and there. And the order that you shave things, um, you know, your very top image, your top shape. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shave the edges on that first and then the shape behind it. I'm going to go shave the edges on that. And that's what you kind of turn out with. So on the same note, um, and this is just a different way to use these tools that I've been doing recently, is creating effects similar to this, where it's almost like a manual chatter. And so this is just another thing I do like using these tools for. Um, and it's 
it's similar to a relief carving, but you're just, you're purely going for a pattern. And so I'm going to start over on this backside right in the middle. And this is something I don't, uh, I don't really stencil anything out for, but I will start, um, I sort of start with a point and then I'm going to pull a little shaving backwards out of that. That's it. And then I'm going to turn a little bit and do the same thing. Turn a little bit and do the same thing. And you'll see how this develops. And this is, I just think, a good demonstration of how you can use that very sharp edge to just cut and pull. Um, and I'm not doing it a lot of times because I don't, I don't want to create an extra layer. I want to do that later on purpose, but not, not at this point. Okay, so I sort of have a, it's almost like a little snowflake going. And all I did was use the shape of this tool, that little triangle, push in and like cut a piece out. So now I'm gonna do the same, the same thing, but I'm gonna move, kind of do a little offset. Just like that. And I'm going to do that same offset all along here. Okay, so now you can kind of tell I have one offset all the way around. I'm going to do the same thing, just offset again. And this is what I was talking about, where you kind of have one chance because you're just making a little scrape. All you're doing is scraping, um, but that's going to create a line right there. And as long as you're just generally scraping in the right direction, you can create this sort of layered effect and this is just something that's like a little bonus design i've been adding on a lot of my stuff recently just to make it interesting um, and then here i'm going to switch directions And go that way. And what I like about doing this is it doesn't require a lot of planning or thought. I just kind of do the same thing over and over again. And every time you end up with a different design so as i'm going out creates this layered effect i'm gonna come in here do that one I know we're getting close to wrapping up here, but I really want to show, um, this just shows like how, one, how sharp these are and how you can use the shape of the tool itself to just make some neat patterns. Uh, and this is still the P27. I do, I, generally I, I probably use this one the most just because it has that really sharp corner to it. Mm -hmm. 
But then, for example, I'll switch to the 26, which is this long diamond. And I might add, I will just press in and use, you know, it's like a little triangle. So I'm going to go in every spot here. And then back to the 27. And so I'll just keep going outwards. Almost like a mandala in a way. Yeah, like a lot like that. You just kind of, you know, you start in the middle and you make a little pattern going around and then keep working your way outwards and just make a little pattern in. These are fun to make. Sometimes I'll do it like on the bottom of a piece or something. Um, and uh, <clears throat> yeah, these tools are really, really good for it because all you gotta do is sort of press in very little bit. And so if you're not if you're not one to go for like the organic shapes, you can totally do some interesting stuff like this. I was going for this is one similar to it. So um, if you just kind of pick a pattern and you keep going around, um, it just kind of creates this interesting fractured look. And then you can even do squiggles or uh, you don't necessarily have to go for a, you know, a picture of something. Um, just kind of do whatever you want here. Do you have a finished glaze cup? A lot of folks are asking to, if you have one to share. Um, I do. So that was one here. This is sort of an example of that pattern. So very similar, uh, very similar concept, except just around the piece. Um, and then this is the, I believe this is the desert sky, which I really like um, just because it picks up you know, the lightest of a little scratch. So even, you know, even these two little scratch marks lines right there, very, very light, but you know, you get the right glaze and it'll pick it up. And so that's an example of one. Um, I do one other one here. So very similar thing, just a little pattern. Um, these are very, very light scratches. So just hardly breaking the surface. Uh, but again, the glaze will pick it up and then you get this neat wavy um, pattern effect. So those are the two I have with me right here. Fantastic. All right. There so we we're, we're, you did it. We made it to the, to the end and you got all your carving done. I know we were talking about That's all we got. I know. <laughs> I know it's all time, but uh, why don't you come back when we have more time when we have a longer, we give you an hour or so and you can just carve till your heart's delight. Oh, I'll go forever, so. <laughs> yeah, I know, me too. I love the carving and I love watching others carve. So thank you so much, Nikolai. And thank oh, you thank to the you. folks at Diamond Core Tools for being part of this year's Clay Share Con. We'll see you back tomorrow for, cool. I believe we'll be you're back. Back we got on the schedule. Stuff. All right, thanks. thanks. All right, wow. So if you ever want to do relief carving, Nikolai just showed you how it can be done, and it's pretty easy. If you came in later and missed the beginning, this video will be available as a replay uh, in an hour or so, and then it'll be up forever, and so you can go back and watch it and use this as a great resource. If you haven't checked out Diamond Core Tools yet, you should. I have to tell you, as an artist who's been carving for 23 years, they changed my life when I discovered them about 12 years ago, and I have to say I've never looked back it's totally worth the investment to get yourself some good tools. It'll save your hands and your carving will actually be much, much better with good tools. So thanks again, Diamond Core Tools. We're also giving away a set of these relief carving tools tonight. 
We're also giving away Diamond Core Tools tomorrow. And then we have a huge giveaway. We're giving away a set of their P-Series, which is 33 of their tools. It's worth almost $1,000. And we're going to be giving that away Saturday night. Now, with all of our giveaways, you just go to clayshare.com and sign up for our emails, and that's how you get entered. And if you go to claysharecon.com, you can see the whole schedule and the list of everything that's happening throughout the rest of these three days. Now, we're going to take a little break, but we're going to be back at 1230 with Maria Sampson, and she's going to be sharing with us some glazes from Georgie's Ceramic. And if you're not familiar with Georgie's, come join us if you are. Come back anyways, because Maria's always got some great things, and we always love having her. So I'll see you guys in a little bit. Have a good lunch.